Coming up, the gift of family for some of Norfolk's foster children, helping small businesses get off the ground and watch out for Cheryl's. We'll let you know what they are and where you'll find them. These and many more good news stories from Ocean View to Park Place on this edition of Norfolk News Now. Welcome to the December issue of Norfolk News Now. I'm Karen Parker Chesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Thanks for joining us. For some time, visitors have been awed by the delicate and beautiful works of art in the Chrysler Museum's glass collection. Now there's a new way to experience the art of glass. A look behind the scenes at the skill it takes to create a masterpiece. The Triple N's John Linka has the story. The Chrysler Museum holds one of the world's largest exhibits of glass art. More than 10,000 pieces dating back 3,000 years. And now, you don't have to go far to see how they're made. This is something we've been dreaming about for, oh, 15, 20 years. And uh, finally it's here, and I think it's surpassed even our wildest expectations. Sitting right across the street from the Chrysler Museum is its new glass studio. Who's seen glass blowing before? And this is one of its free daily glass blowing demonstrations. But actually there's some clear glass on top. All of that clear glass. On this day, glass studio manager Charlotte Potter served as the voice of the demonstration, and husband and wife team Robin and Julia Rogers served as the glass makers. Glass is a lot like honey. You constantly have to be turning the glass. So sure, she's turning the rod. As you can see, it comes out, it looks orange. That's simply because it's 2,150 degrees. If she stops turning for a moment, it starts to fall right off the pipe. The demonstrations, like the glass studio, have been here since early November, and the enthusiasm for both has been, well, hot. Uh, we're up about 60% in total attendance over where we were the same month a year ago, and that's the studio. Um, virtually every one of our demonstrations is standing room only. I, I didn't know what to expect when I came here, and it was, it, it was astounding. The beautiful part of glass is see, you're seeing it liquid right now, and she's pulling, pulling. Robin's going to grab the other end of the pipe. They can go to the other sides of the studio, guys. They could run all the way down the block and pull this glass out. I never could have expected the amount of public um, interest. My biggest surprise is just how much people are excited and really I feel like the glass speaks pretty well for itself. All of the tools used in this studio are handmade and have a positive purpose even though they may look like something you'd find in the office of an angry dentist. The jacks are two knives blades that have been hinged together at the back side and we actually lubricate them with a little bit of wax. These are called the tweezers. These are called the diamond shears. They cut from four different directions. Then we have the straight shears, which resemble regular scissors. And then a couple other tools, namely a wet newspaper. This is one of our favorite tools. This is the closest that we'll ever get to touching the glass with our bare hands. These hour-long demonstrations can involve some audience interaction. Good, Lisa. Yeah, you can keep along. That's fantastic and for many can provide encouragement to give it a try. So, Julia's going to give the glass a little tap. Beautiful, it comes right off. Folks can sign up for glass blowing classes, but it's not as easy as it looks. All of us have our masters in glass. So we've actually done an undergraduate in glass and then as well as a masters, as well as taking workshops with uh, masters from all over the world. All of us have pretty much dedicated our lives to it. We've, we've moved wherever glass is. It took about, I'm going to say, 10 years before I could look at an object and replicate it. Before that, I would sort of go with the flow. When something went wrong, I'd be like, well, now it looks like that. But technical proficiency takes many years of practice, and I think you can attribute it much to like playing an instrument where you have to do drills, you have to practice over and over again. And I've probably spent thousands of hours in the glass studio practicing glass blowing, and I learn something new every single day when I come in. Working together in a surgically precise ballet of hands, tools, heat, and liquid glass, they somehow stay out of each other's way and make this look easy, thanks to their 47 years of combined glass blowing experience. Timing is extremely important in the hot shop, and sometimes you need to have up to five people to create a piece when it has a lot of intricate layers. When you think about um, a painter, they would work in a private studio, and uh, they would work by themselves. It's a solitary endeavor. And in the glass studio, this is very much a, a team process. So we work in groups, um, and then also we're open to the public, so it sort of becomes a performance. The beauty of this studio is that we, we embrace the performative aspects of this material. 
For more information on glass blowing demonstrations or classes, visit the Chrysler Museum's website at Chrysler.org. For Norfolk News Now, I'm John Linko. The conversation continues. Last month, Lambert's Point residents, property and business owners, ODU students and city staff got together for a follow-up to the community conversation that got started earlier in the year. They are working together to find ways to keep their neighborhoods safe. Many of the suggestions centered on the idea that safety starts with familiarity. Small work groups envision projects and events that help neighbors get to know neighbors. Family-friendly community gatherings, sharing yard work, and forming water groups and neighborhood walks to keep an eye out for suspicious people or activity. Many of those in attendance returned to the follow-up conversation after participating in the first round of talks. This time, folks left with the goal of encouraging at least 10 more neighbors to get involved before the end of the year. Norfolk Police Officer Ali Williams has been honored as the 2011 winner of the Greater Hampton Roads Crime Line Crime Solvers Top Cop Award for the City of Norfolk. Officer Williams is part of the Crime Prevention Unit and is in charge of the Police Athletic League. Through his tireless promotion, the department's Badges for Baseball program has expanded by more than 100 players over the course of a single year. The inner city baseball program fielded 32 teams for the 2011 season. The program allows NPD to interact with the city's youth in a positive way. In addition to badges for baseball, Officer Williams helped coordinate a multi-city bike safety rodeo and was a regular at the city's movie nights in various neighborhoods where he delivered crime prevention and personal safety tips before each show. Officer Williams, the City of Norfolk salutes you. With identity theft a real problem, Norfolk residents now have a secure way to dispose of old documents. The Department of Public Works now offers free document shredding services to Norfolk residents. Twice a week, residents can bring up to 100 sheets of paper to be safely and securely shredded at the city's towing and recovery center. If you have 100 sheets of paper or less, the shredding service is available while you wait. Quantities over 100 sheets that are larger than a shoebox but can fit within a shopping bag can be dropped off for workers to shred later. All paper is shredded into quarter-inch strips and then delivered to the city's contracted recycling center. Know before you go, remove any plastic or metal bindings, covers, or large staples from paper to be shredded. Papers should generally be office document sized up to 8.5 by 14 inches. Hardcover books, telephone books, and other oversized materials are not accepted. The Towing and Recovery Center is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 1195 Lance Road. Ever dream of turning your big idea into a business opportunity? Several years ago, Norfolk's Development Department created tools to help make those dreams come true. Lori Crouch shows you how some new business owners use those tools to carve out their paths to success. A little bean is cooking up big business in Norfolk. Four months ago, Cafe Stella owners Marus and Stella Pomianic turned their dream into reality fresh brewed coffee, fresh baked goods, cooked up with the help of Norfolk's development department. Each step of the way, we felt like there was some assistance, like writing a business plan. In 2008, Norfolk was home to more than 12,000 businesses. In 2010, that number jumped by more than 2,000. The key to Norfolk's success? It sees the big picture. I think it's looking at it from a holistic approach, like what are all the key pieces that a small business would need? and not necessarily just focusing on the, the financing. As business development manager of special services, Carla Howard unites regional partners with business owners to put them on a path to potential success. We also train on how to do business with the government. We bring in the federal government institutions, state institutions, and local government institutions and teach those business owners how to prepare proposals successfully and then how to submit those proposals. It's that type of support Noel Musciano hopes to tap into to help his new idea take off. There's none out there and that's the view, one of the beauties of it. This is a tutorial. It's an iPhone and Android app that allows you to create, publish and share tutorials, like do it yourselves. Let's say if you want to make a pizza or a plant, a plant, etc. The sky's the limit. Brewing big ideas all kinds of business right here in the city of Norfolk. 
We always feel like people believe in us, like they believe in the idea, and it definitely helps us a lot. For Norfolk News Now, I'm Lori Crouch. The Virginia Zoo is embarking on a new capital campaign. The money will go toward a larger animal hospital. The larger hospital and diet kitchen are required for the zoo to maintain accreditation with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Next year, this place we're standing in right now will become the zoo's animal wellness campus. It's a facility that will be made up of zoo hospital for our animal collection um, and a zoo commissary or diet kitchen where the animal diets are being prepared. It really brings together all the things that we do here for our animals from a, a animal health and well-being standpoint, providing them with good nutrition, good medicine, um, and extending our husbandry skills across the entire collection. Besides the obvious benefits to the zoo's permanent residents, the hospital and kitchen will provide additional educational opportunities for zoo visitors as well. The animal hospital and the diet kitchen will be a view into facility, meaning our visitors can walk up to very large windows and view into the animal surgery room, the animal treatment, uh, a scrub room where the doctors actually clean up to go into an animal treatment or surgery, and then even our diet kitchen uh, folks will be able to view into to see the diets being prepared, animal enrichment items being produced. The capital campaign will need to raise about four million dollars. The good news, they've already raised nearly three million toward the goal. Did you know that no matter where you live in Norfolk, you are never more than a quarter of a mile from a natural waterway? It is no surprise then that protecting natural waterways is a top priority for the city's stormwater management teams. The city oversees a series of best management practices designed to help protect natural water sources. These best practices include monthly street sweeping to keep trash from entering sewers, stormwater ponds to reduce erosion and filter pollutants, as well as education and outreach. To find out more about what the Environmental Stormwater Management Team does and how you can help protect Norfolk's natural waterways, call 823-4000 or visit them online. The city recently installed the first shower on Church Street at Golf. Never heard of a shower? Well, it looks a little like this. A graphic of a bicycle with two chevrons above it painted onto the roadway. The shower serves as a reminder to cyclists and drivers alike to share the road once a bike lane ends. The addition of the shower is part of the city's commitment to make Norfolk a best-in-class, bikeable, walkable city. Look for more showers and bike lanes in the future. When we come back, Opsail is making a majestic return to Hampton Roads. Plus, go inside Norfolk's adoption court and a holiday tradition returns to the Norfolk Botanical Gardens. Why not? I know we all everybody doing tonight. Hello. Hello. Chrissy, hey. Hey, Alex. How are you? <laughs> Alex? Alex, Alex? Oh. Hello. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Garcia. We've heard a lot about you. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. lose their babies to gun crimes. You'll always be your mother's baby. So before you commit a gun crime, think about who you'll leave behind. Gun crimes hit home. Welcome back to the Triple N. Last month, the city of Norfolk announced that it will join other cities throughout Hampton Roads in one of the biggest celebrations this region has ever seen in Opsail 2012. Opsail 2012 will feature tall sailing ships from dozens of nations along, <coughs> along with U.S. naval ships. This is, in some regards, a first. Parades of sail, an air show, and many, uh, many more exciting events 
are to be held at locations stretching along, stretching from the Eastern Shore to Southampton Roads and the Peninsula. The downtown Norfolk waterfront will, sail, will serve as the center for op sale activities. It's going to be a world-class event for one of the largest tall ship and maritime events in history. Taking place from June 1st through the 12th, op sale 2012 will be a commemoration of the bicentennial of the War of 1812 and the Star Spangled Banner. Op sale 2012 will put our region and the Commonwealth on the international stage. It will demonstrate that the Port of Virginia is one of the world's great ports. Dozens of tall sailing ships and military ships from around the world will head to the downtown Norfolk waterfront. But the celebrations won't be limited to the sea. The world-famous Blue Angels will also be a part of Opsail 2012, returning to the Virginia Beach oceanfront for the first time in decades. We're very excited to be coming back to this area. You know, we travel the country 35 weeks out of the year demonstrating the pride and professionalism that your Navy and Marine Corps sailors and Marines represent. So uh, it's, a, it's an honor for us to come back. For more information on Upsell 2012, log on to upsell2012.virginia.com. Nautica's Junior Scientist Club took part in some exciting new educational programming last month. By using distance learning technology, the students participated in a live broadcast with some of the educators at sea and scientists on the underwater explorer vessel Nautilus. The Nautilus is the ship of famous underwater explorer Robert Ballard. Ballard is an accomplished deep sea explorer, but is probably best known for discovering the wreckage of the RMS Titanic. The junior scientists were able to interact with 16 educators from around the nation who have spent the past five months participating in field programs aboard the Nautilus in the Black and Mediterranean Seas. The Nauticus Junior Scientist Club is made up of middle school students from Norfolk Public Schools. The goal is to heighten the students' awareness of global marine and maritime careers and expose them to the influence humans have on the health and preservation of the Chesapeake Bay. One of the hottest tickets around right now isn't really a ticket at all. The Norfolk Public Library's Community Help Card is in such demand. Library staff have placed a second order. NPO created the cards back in 2009 as sort of a pocket reference guide to referral services, city organizations, and crisis hotlines. In October, the third edition of the wallet size cards became available at NPL branches around the city. Two months later, nearly all of the 15,000 cards were gone. You can get your recently replenished 2011-2012 Community Help Card at any Norfolk Public Library location. If you're interested in getting multiple cards for your organization, call the library at 664-7328, extension 341. Children in East Ocean View have a brand new playground to explore. The Department of Recreation, Parks and Open Space recently installed new equipment at the East Ocean View Community Center. The new equipment includes slides, swings, climbers, and activity panels. There are also binoculars to let kids explore the scenes of Pretty Lake and the Shore Drive Bridge. New benches and the existing tree canopy will help keep moms and dads comfortable while the kids play. Part of the $84,000 cost was picked up by Bon Secours Healthy Community. Demolition crews took down the old boathouse late last month. The concert venue has been closed since 2003 when inspections revealed significant repairs were needed for it to be safe. Earlier this year, the fire marshal and city attorney toured the site. Although the building was behind a locked fence and posted with no trespassing signs, city officials found evidence people had been entering the building. Out of concern for safety, they decided to tear down the structure. The pier at the location will remain intact. However, crews will erect a fence around the site to keep it safe. Chrysler Hall and Seven Venues is receiving high marks for efforts to keep the arts accessible to all audiences. Open captioning is an electronic text display to the side of the stage that shows what the actors are saying and singing and describes sound effects on stage. Members of the Hearing Loss Association of Virginia Beach recently took in a performance of Beauty and the Beast. After the show, they let theater staff know what a remarkable experience it was for them, some of whom had never been to a live theater performance before. Open captioning and ASL interpretation is available during Saturday matinee performances for select shows. 
It's become almost as much a Hampton Roads holiday tradition as a visit from the jolly old elf himself. The Dominion Power Garden of Lights is back at the Norfolk Botanical Garden. Two miles of glittering, twinkling, festive wonder awaits every day from 5.30 to 10 p.m. It's $10 per car to visit Sunday through Thursday, $15 per car on Friday and Saturday. Every Monday is Military Appreciation Night. Admission is half off with Military ID. The Garden of Lights presented by Dominion Virginia Power will shine every night through January. The holiday season is all about giving. Some children in foster care in Norfolk were recently giving the gift of a lifetime. Families. The Triple N's Jan Callahan has more. I'd like to welcome all of you and thank you for coming today to participate in our favorite program. Today, today is the day that we celebrate being chosen. And for the kids, first of all, we start out and say congratulations. We honor you because you have formed the core of a family, not because of chance, but because your parents yearned to find you. With hopeful hearts, they searched for you. And with great joy, they found you. And when they found you, they chose you over all others. Adoption Day may only come once a year, but this ceremony honoring Norfolk's expanded families marks the beginning of a lifetime of memories. The children, many of them siblings, came by way of the Norfolk foster care system. Not all of them could be together then, but on this day, they were once again whole. Nine-year-old Shaley Corbin spoke on behalf of her sisters Paige and Autumn and brother Devin. I love being adopted because it's, it's such a nice family and, and everyone loves you in the family. I love the Corbins because they are they're so nice and they give us enough food and water because a long time ago we, we never used to have food or water. We had to go hunt for it somewhere we could find any. So the Corbins are good, good people to us because we because we have our, our needs. And I love to color and draw because it's fascinating. It's cool. <laughs> I just think I, I just think the curves are really good because we just get all of our needs and then we get a lot of love and care. Each family took their turn in the spotlight to relish the congratulations, the applause, and the sense of unity and shared relief that filled the courtroom. Those sentiments spilled out into the reception hall after the ceremony. Lorraine Cortland's three daughters, sisters Shantavian, Tamaya, and Tiffany, are the second group of siblings that she has adopted. Today is, is so, so nice because, you know, we talk about permanency, and today seals it. Priscilla McMillan is now the proud mother of Brianna, Melody, and Hen, and yes, their sisters too. I'm an only child, so I grew up being an only child. Then I had five children of my own, and my baby is 40, so after that I decided to do foster care. So doing foster care, it became permanent care. Queen Taylor, who already has a 15-year-old adopted son, brought brothers Donovan and Jamonte into the family circle. After I got into it, I really liked it and wanted to make a difference. I like it. It's challenging, but it's, you got to have the patience and the love. There are not always a lot of opportunities to be happy with what goes on in this building, so this is one of them. This is maybe the, our favorite one. For Norfolk News Now, I'm Jan Callahan. That wraps up the December edition of Norfolk News Now and the Triple N. Thanks for watching Norfolk's Neighborhood Network for all things Norfolk. I'm Karen Parker Tesson with the Norfolk Police Department. Take care of yourself and your city and celebrate life daily.